relationship with HaKadosh Baruch is like sons to a father. Wherever you get your podcasts from, or our own website, prismoftorah.org. This is The Prism of Torah, with Rabbi Saf Aaron Prisman. This week's episode is Le'ilu Nishmas, Rabbi Chaim Klein, Rabbi Chaim Ben Shalom. Shalom Uvrochor, in this week's parsha, Parshas Pinchas, we know he did a very courageous act, and it was in the merit of his courageous act that he got such a big reward. Aside from the fact that he actually stopped HaKadosh Baruch Hu from doing a plague, and many people were, were dying, and Chas Shalom, the Pasuk tells us that all Kalal Yisrael could have been wiped out if it wasn't for his courageous act. And hence, he got this amazing reward after stopping the adultery that was happening, the Gilu Yerayos, and he got an incredible bracha, as we spoke about a couple of weeks ago. The biggest bracha is Shalom. He got the covenant of peace of Shalom. And also, he got to be a Kohen. So ask Rav Moshe Feinstein, what is it about his act that he did that was so huge that he got such a big reward? At the end of the day, the reward was incredible. I mean, to get the covenant of Shalom, which is the biggest bracha one can get, as well as to become a Kohen, what is it about his act that he did that deserved such a big reward? That's question number one. Question number two, it's more to do with the three weeks that started. As we know, these are the days we're mourning the Beis HaMikdash. The Gemara Masech HaSiyama Daftes says the following. The first temple by Rishon was destructed because the three cardinal sins were being done. Avoid Zorah, Giloy Arayos, and Shvichus Domi. On the other hand, the second Beis HaMikdash was destructed because of Sinas Chinam that there was hatred between the Jews. And the Gemara goes on to say, it's to teach you that they're equal. Meaning, from a certain perspective, we have to say, because the, the question begs itself, what do you mean it's equal? The Gemara says, just like the destruction happened from those three huge cardinal sins, which we can understand why they're huge, so too it's equatable to sinas chinam, the sin of sinas chinam, which is hatred of one Jew to another for no proper halachic reason. And the question begs itself, what do you mean they're equal? The three top big sins, killing a person, all these things, shvichus domim, gilu yarat, how can it be that they're equal to each other? Hare, if we look in the Torah, we see the sin of hating the fellow Jew in your heart is only a love, as opposed to the other three big sins, which are way more severe in punishment. So how can they be equatable? There must be a certain perspective that sinas chinam is very, very bad, even more than the others to make it equal. What is that thing? And last question, for those of you who learned Daf Yomi a couple of weeks ago, in the Gemaras, in Baba Basra, around Daf Tes, Daf Ches over there, it talks about the unbelievable reward one gets for giving tzedakah. It acts like a shield to protect you from all, from all these negative things that can happen to you. It also, tzedakah tatsil mimavis, same idea, protects you from, from Misa, and it gives you Gan Eden. What is it about tzedakah that's so unique? as opposed to other mitzvahs that gives you such a big reward. Before we answer all these questions, we'll share with you a Gemara also, a Gemara in Bav Basra Daf, Tessa Mudalef, I think, and it talks about an argument Rabbi Akiva had with Tonosophus. Tonosophus Arasha says to him, huh, Hashem doesn't love you. If He loves you so much, why do He create poor people amongst your people in the Jewish nation? Rabbi Akiva answers, huh, I'll tell you why. Because He gives us, He wants to give us the opportunity to get Olam Abba. We get Olam Abba by giving tzedakah. So he wants us to do that. Tonosophus Arasha says back to Rabbi Akiva, <laughs> what are you talking about? Hafuch, <laughs> fakert. If you give tzedakah to a poor person, you're going to get Gehenim for that. Not, not an Eden, Gehenim. Why? Because Lema Davar Doimeh, a king that puts someone in jail, and you come and help that person out, you feed him and you take him out of jail, obviously the king's going to be very upset at you, and that's what you're doing. Hashem created a person as a poor person on purpose, and you're helping him. Rabbi Akiva says, You've got it all wrong. You're comparing us to Avadim, to slaves. That's not our relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Our relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu is we are Banim LaShem Elokechem. We're like sons to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And hence, the true marshal should be the parable that's more appropriate is the following. If a king has no choice but to put his son in jail because he did a crime. Of course the king wants someone to help him. If you come and help him without anyone knowing and you give him food and you let him out of jail, the king's going to be happy with you. That is our situation. There's more in the argument between Rabbi Akiva and Tolosophus, but we'll leave it at that. The idea is that our relationship with HaGadosh is like sons to a father. And hence, 
When you have such a relationship, you don't view, you don't put your glasses on and decide if to do a sin or not, or if to do a mitzvah or not, based on, oh, what's the severity of the punishment? Or what's going to be the reward? No. You love your father. So whatever causes him a lot of pain, which in our case is HaKadosh Buhu, the Shechina, then of course you don't want to do it. And what's going to give him a lot of enjoyment, Nachas Ruach, then of course you want to do it. The epitome of giving Nachas Ruach to HaKadosh Buhu is when you do, so to speak, what Hashem was going to do Himself, what's really matim and fitting for the Master to do on His own. That gives the Father the biggest, amazing, unbelievable feeling. Wow, look at my son. And He wants to reward him. This is similar to a person going with his kid, a mother going with a son to the supermarket to do some shopping. The son really wants to help. He wants to do the mother's job. He wants to carry one of the packages, one of the bags. Now, how can, we, how can he carry? He can barely carry. But still, the mother gives him and even though it doesn't help her so much, it's almost negligible. But yet she gets such a good feeling. Wow, look, the son wants to help me. That's how HaKadosh Buch views it when we do something that gives him a good feeling. Meaning, we give Nachas Ruch to HaKadosh Buch. The epitome of that is when we try to do, so to speak, his job. And HaKadosh Buch set up the world in such a fashion. And that's what Rabbi Akiva told Ton Nusrofus. HaKadosh Buch set up the world on purpose that will be poor people. Because by, wor- by us, Kivyachol doing HaKadosh Buch's job, and that's what Hashem wants. That's an unbelievable feeling for HaKadosh Buhu. And that Nachas Ruach, HaKadosh Buhu wants to give an infinite amount of reward. This is what happened with Pinchas. Pinchas had to stop what was happening. The Pasuk clearly says that he got what he got because he avenged my vengeance among them. And Rashi explains he got angry at them instead of me. The Russian of Rashi is, Bekatspo et haketsef shayali liktsof. I should have been upset and I should have done something. But instead Pinchas came and did the job for me. Wow, that's an unbelievable thing. That gives HaKadosh Buhu an unbelievable feeling to know that one of his kids does this job that really should be done by the master. Similar idea as with Tzedakah, like we said. Tzedakah also, same idea. Tzedakah is something really to ensure that everyone has enough Parnasa in this world. HaKadosh Buhu created the world and HaKadosh Buhu, like we say in Bilka Samazon, ensures that everyone has what he needs. And if someone doesn't have what he needs, and another Jew takes care of that, Lichoyga, he's doing Hashem's job, and Hashem orchestrated it that way, because HaKadosh Buhu who wants us to have the opportunity to do this job, this tafkid. And that's why HaKadosh Buhu gave such a big reward to Pinchas, and that's why HaKadosh Buhu also gives such a big reward to people that give tzedakah, and we can extrapolate to other such things when we help someone get food, or when someone's feeling really down, and, and he's depressed, and he, he can't live life, we want to help him out. And that's Lichoyga, doing HaKadosh Buhu tafkid. And that's why it's such a big reward. A similar idea we find in the Midrash Tanchuma. The Midrash Tanchuma continues this argument between Rabbi Akiva and Tonosophus. And over there, Tonosophus Harosha asks Rabbi Akiva, Oh, why do you have to do bris mila? If it's so important, why, did why didn't HaKadosh Buhu Hu create you and you were born with the bris mila already? Rabbi Akiva says, because he wants us to do his job. That's the whole idea. He wants to give us such big credit because we're doing his job. Because who? What is the bris mila? The bris mila represents a sign a symbol. We are slaves to HaKadosh Buhu. Who does that? The master, not the slave. But here we are doing it. Wow. And that's why Bemet Brismila is an unbelievable mitzvah which, with, um, which includes amazing reward and also big punishment. It's only one of the few, only one of two mitzvahs that say that if you don't do it, you get kovis. Mimele, we answer two of our three questions. Why did Pinchas get such a big reward? We now understand. Lichura, he did the tafke that the master should do HaKadosh Buhu. But he wanted to do it. Tzedakah also, such a big reward because we're doing the Tafit of HaGadosh Buhu, because we view things as what's going to give Nachas Ruach to Hashem. That is unbelievable. We don't care about selfishly what's the reward, what's the punishment. We want to do what's going to give a Geshmak feeling to the Shekhinah. And there's many, many Gemaras that show that the Shekhinah does have Nachas Ruach, Shekhinah representing HaGadosh Buhu. And the last piece of the puzzle that we need to answer is, what is it about Sina Shekhinah that's from a certain perspective at least, equatable to the three cardinal sins? The answer is, like Rashi says in our parsha, Kashe alai It's hard for me when you disconnect from me. But Rashi explains, what does it mean that you disconnect from me? It also means, Peirud, it comes from the word Peirud, being, peirud being disconnected. When Klal Yisrael disconnected from each other, there's no unity, that hurts HaKadosh Buhu. And we can understand that, because every father knows what it means when the kids fight with each other, and they have hatred towards each other, that hurts, that causes a lot of pain and agony to the parents. So too were all Bnei Yisrael, 
And it hurts HaKadosh Baruch Hu Kivyechol, if you can speak like that, that there is hatred amongst the Jews. We know the unbelievable Maila in Achdus and unity. We know it was a prerequisite to get the Torah, which is what the world is all about. We know it was Kulam Ke'ish Echad Belev Echad. That was a prerequisite before we got the Torah. Which, by the way, now that we're talking about Torah, we also understand why the biggest thing is Torah. The biggest reward, as we say every morning. Can you get Kulam? The reward of Torah is unbelievable. Why? Because that is Kivyachol. Hashem set up the world that will, uh, that the people that learn Torah, they continue the world going. Hashem said, I want you to continue the world going. And that's why if you learn, you're, you're partners with me in creating, a, in creating the world because the world continues to exist through your learning Torah. As it says, if it's not the Brit's Torah that we learn Torah all the time, the world would stop to exist, Chas Vishal. So now we understand that we should view the world from, our, from the perspective of what's going to give the Shechina, Nachas Suach, and Chas Vishalom refrain in doing what's going to cause it pain. I would like to end with a story. My wife just told me she went to, we have a Baruch Hashem, one of our kids is, is a special needs child, and my wife went to the Mesiba of the, the end of the year. There was a get together with all the parents and the kids. They did some Hatzaga. And Mesiach Lifitumoy, one of the mothers that my wife knows already for a long time, Suddenly she told her, by the way, we're doing a Kiddush this Shabbos, I would like you to come over. So my wife asked, what's the Kiddush for? So she, she says, the Kiddush is in the merits that finally we got the papers of the adoption. She goes, what, your special ed kid is adopted? She goes, yeah. So my wife asked, why? why? You have so many kids. Why, why did you adopt this kid? So she told her, and this is very moving, and this is exactly the point we're talking about. She said, because we cannot take it when there is a Jewish kid out there that doesn't have loving parents. So we're still on the list now to get another kid because we want to ensure that there is no Jewish kid that does not have parents and loving parents. That's unbelievable. That's exactly what we're talking about. We're to and that's why they did a kiddush. And they're still on the list to get more kids because they realize this is what really gives Nachasot HaKadosh Baruch to ensure, which is from a certain perspective HaKadosh Baruch Hu's job, to ensure every Jewish kid will be brought up in the right way. They want to take that. They want to jump into that space and fill up that void. I would just like to say that the shira I'm giving over a mitzvah Hashem will be Lulim Yishmasoy of a family friend, Reb Chaim Klein Zatzal that passed away this past week. It was always so good to me and I learned so much from him about Midot Tovot. Every time I came to that house, the Klein's family, they were all so nice to me, but especially the father. He had such Midot Tovot. It was so nice to me always. Yeratzon that will learn from him to have good midos and realize that's what life is all about and he'll give us chizuk and b'schut zeh there'll be an aliyah to his neshama good job this concludes another episode of the prism of Torah. thank you for tuning in today we hope you enjoyed it and learned something valuable if you did please subscribe to the podcast and give a five-star rating you can also find this podcast wherever you get your podcasts or our own website, prismofterror.com, where we have a full archive of all our past episodes. We would like to thank Yona Veffa for the recording equipment and Ellie Podcast Productions for handling all our post-podcast productions. Join us next week for another enlightening conversation on the Prism of Terror.